Hey guys, got another thing to tear down here. Got this uh, from a friend, he uh, told me it's water damaged. I've tried to charge it and it doesn't really seem to work too well. It's actually a an NEC brand, WiMAX 2 Plus Speed Wi-Fi Next WX01. A little bit of uh, English on the front there maybe. But it's a, uh, it's a mobile cell based uh, Wi-Fi access point. So you, you've got a SIM card or something in there. And it'll... Um, uh, give you Wi-Fi access for your mobile phones or whatever you know if you're traveling and that sort of thing so uh, my friend has these for his Airbnb so it gives one you know per room and uh, travelers can use their mobile phones and still access Wi-Fi for Google Maps and all that sort of stuff so I have tried charging it and it comes up with a little charging icon I think you can just see it there but it soon goes out and when I turn it on it comes up with a message that says something in Japanese um, but apparently it's not working because it got water damage someone must have dropped it in the toilet maybe I don't know they it, it, it must be left out in the rain but it's um I thought I'd keep it because it's got a lithium battery in there and it's got like a what looks like an OLED screen so I can probably use it as parts but I thought we'll have a look inside and see what it's got so it looks like I can take the back off just here and we've got all the uh, internals so Scribbled there, 2016. That must be the date that it was bought. It's got all the relevant marks. Yeah, they had the Japan approval marks for the uh, telecommunications. But it is a NEC and uh, WiMAX Wi-Fi. I think that's Intel technology WiMAX. And it's on the KDDI network. I think that's a, a Japanese. Uh, telecommunications like you got Comcast and all that sort of stuff in the States or in Australia you've got you know, Telstra and Optus. KDDI, KDDI is uh, one of the Japanese providers along with Docomo and SoftBank. It looks like that's our SIM card there actually. I might pull that out and it's probably been cancelled but I'll retain that give it back to my mate. AU, yeah KDDI AU is the, uh, the provider. So let's put that aside, I'll keep that safe. So I've got this battery, nice size battery, it's a uh, 2.5 amp hour, 2500 milliamp hour, 9.5 watt hours and it's uh, 3.8 volt, a single cell, so that definitely will be useful. And then we've got, looks like, six screws to open the thing up, so let's pull that apart. Alright, so I've got those tri-wing screws out, little temp proof screws, there's six all up, and it looks like there's little clips, so I'm going to have to kind of get this thing leave it open it looks like there's an adhesive in there as well I didn't want this thing coming open oh there we go I think I've nearly got it just like that now they must have put this first then this because that's stuck to that but they must have connected inside then put this on and it's adhered down like that yep there's the adhesive and we have a metal can so what I'll do I'll cut this can off and we'll also have a close look at the screen to see if there's anything useful something we can uh, yeah, maybe extract that little OLED screen from there so let's have a look at what we've got inside this thing We've got our SIM card slot just here. Here's our battery terminals, the uh, positive and negative and temperature sense wire. That's why there's three there. And then we've got our micro USB port sitting over here. Now on this side, there's three main chips. There's this one here, this one here, and this one up at the top here. So this first one over this side, this is actually a Marvel chip. It's an 8W8897. And it's the, uh, the radio chip. This is doing all the, uh, like the local communications. It's the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi and the... NFC, uh, near field communications, if that's uh, being used. I don't know if they're using an NFC, but I know they're using Bluetooth and Wi Fi. So that's a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz capable chip. Uh, SOC, they call it, system on chip. So that's doing all of that sort of stuff. Then if we come down here, we've got a, uh, a Skyworks brand. This is a pretty interesting chip. It's an AWM 6268. And this is actually a, a gigahertz power amp. Uh, 2.5 to 2.7 gigahertz power amp module for WiMAX and uh, LTE. So this is actually 
like an amplifier that's connected to the uh, antenna or whatnot, and that's boosting the signal so we can get a decent range. So that's a pretty cool little chip. Now up the top here, this one is a Texas Instruments, and this is our, uh, our I squared C. That's a, the data bus, the communications that's controlling this chip. It's a uh, 4.5 amp single cell USB charge controller, and its part number is BQ24193. So that's basically what's taking the power in from the USB, and then using that chip to then charge the battery and that sort of thing. It's, it's the charging chip, and that's why we got a few large capacitors here and uh, whatnot. So most of these parts around this area will be to do with the charging of the battery and monitoring the voltages and that sort of thing. So that's pretty much all I could find on this side. The smaller chips haven't got enough part numbers to really find any decent information on them. But they'll be like just jelly bean parts, you know, just interconnecting and logic stuff. Those three chips are the main ones for this side. So let's flip over to the other side and we'll see what we've got over here. This is where the brains of the operation are. So you can see again on here this is the underside of our USB port and again the battery connector and this connector here and this one here that one's for the screen for our uh, little OLED screen and this one was for the front panel buttons this little connector here and of course shooting up here is our antenna that's it there going all the way up that trace looks like they've got a um, an unpopulated little something there that's uh, maybe they can put a capacitor there or something to uh, extend the range or make the antenna longer or tune it for different frequencies in different markets I'm not sure but that's the antenna there alright so you can see there's a big one here there's one over here and uh, we've got another chip which is here these other ones were kind of hard to find anything on but this one this one and this one are the main chips so this small one will start here this small one is actually a um, R O M or Rome R O H M. That's the, how you spell their name. Rome. I'm not sure how to say it, but it's a Rome Semi. It's a B D seven one eight zero one, and that's actually a um a power management L S I. The L S I means a large scale integration. Basically, means it's got lots of transistors. You got S S I, which is small scale integration. That's like your um, you know, your seven four, seventy four hundred series chips and the you know the old sort of chips where it's just like your standard integrated circuits. Uh, you've got medium scale integration, they've got very large scale integration, VLSI and you know, SSR, all, all the, the three letter acronyms, TLAs as they call them. But um, that's our uh, doing all our power management. So on the other side of like this part of the board was our charge controller. Now on this side here that's all our power management, that's what's um, producing all the different voltages required by our micro and our you know, different chips around the place. So that's actually got five buck converters so that can create five different voltages there and it's got 12 LDOs which are low dropout regulators so we can get 12 voltages um, regulated voltages and we got five buck converters as well so it's got all sorts of voltages that you can put out it's all programmable of course and it's um it's got power sequencing so you can turn on certain voltages before other ones so you can power up you know the main processor before you power up the Wi-Fi and you can power you know, the RAM in time with different things and whatnot. So you, you can make sure that everything turns on the right sequence so that you know it all configures properly and it's all you know working as it should. And then down here, this large one, this is the main brains of the uh, the operation. This is a uh, GCT brand and it's a GDM 7243Q. It's an advanced LTE with carrier aggregation chip. So it's doing the uh, mobile phone stuff. The other side was doing all the uh, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as I said, on, on the back of the, the board. But this one is actually doing all the mobile phone stuff. And it's actually got two ARM Cortex-A7s at 832 megahertz. So it's a dual core. And it's uh, it's got category 5, 6, and 7 communications, like for uh, uh, local comms, if you have wide connections. Uh, and it's a... Uh, that's the radio frequency, the baseband, it's got 120 megabytes of, uh, of memory in there, all on a single chip. So it's basically the, the main CPU, it does all the, the heavy lifting of the operation. And then just over here, this is a Toshiba chip. I couldn't actually find the full part number online. It must be like a, a custom implementation of a, uh, a, like a basic design. 
they probably bought enough of those that they could get that custom made or a custom number at least but the first part of the number the TC58BYG I found that this one actually has an extension on that 053H it will be a certain variant um, but it's a Toshiba chip and it's a CMOS NAND E squared PROM basically it's flash memory it's a flash chip like on your USB drive so that's going to be holding all the configuration data right I'm not sure how big that is but the from what I could find it comes in either one two or four gigabyte I would say that's probably a one gigabyte maybe it's even smaller I'm not sure um, but that's just holding all the, the firmware and configuration stuff you know there's there's not much need for local storage on this thing it's not a, a USB stick or a little microcomputer that you're going to be using like like you would a smartphone this is just a communications thing that's pretty much it for what's inside this thing. A lot of these other chips, they're going to be just, like I said, jelly bean logic chips and whatnot. You've got to, you know, all these capacitors for decoupling and the power supply, because you know, this is all the, the main power supply section. So, yeah, not, not too bad. It's actually not much I can salvage from this apart from the screen because it's so tightly integrated. So here we've got that OLED screen. It's a tiny little thing. It's about, oh, well, not much bigger than my thumbnail. So I'll keep this one because I might be able to find a use for it. I can't actually find any data sheets or any information about it at all really online. Uh, the part number 0D8-81H118. I can't find that. There's nothing comes up for that. So there is another number 4204 and then 12 down the bottom on the flat flex and B6 which is probably just like a, a lot number or something on the glass. But you can see the dark blue is where the, uh, the actual screen is of course. And then we've got our, our chip on glass which would be a driver chip for the uh, for the OLED screen and that comes out to the uh, the normal flat flex cable so maybe I can find I don't know on eBay or something maybe there's a, a similar screen on a breakout board and I can get this thing working somehow but I'll, I'll keep that anyway and uh, see what I can do with it so that's what you're going to find inside one of these mobile Wi-Fi access points small PCB with all the smarts on the system on chips pretty tightly integrated there and just a few parts. So I'm going to keep the battery in the screen. They'll go in the parts bin and might come in handy one day. And the rest, yeah, pretty much just throw it in the bin. Alright, we'll see you next time.